On many occasions, Jesus taught his disciples that you cannot be a good Christian without prayer. Pray without ceasing, he said. Knock, and you will be opened. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. He himself prayed in the desert, before he entered his public life, before he chose his 12 apostles, on the mountain, in Gethsemane, on the evening before he died, on the cross. And today again, in spite of his busy and hectic program, we read in the gospel how in the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a lonely place to pray. So Jesus himself prayed without ceasing, and he expects his disciples to do the same. As some saintly man said, prayer is the breath of faith. Without prayer, our faith is dead. Now, if that is the case, the question may be asked, how much time do we ourselves spend on prayer? Not only by going to Mass, but also privately. We Catholics are sometimes so busy with all sorts of religious activities. We organize processions and ceremonies. We build churches. We attend courses and go for pilgrimages. And we engage ourselves in all sorts of social and charitable activities in the service of Christ. Very good. But do we also spend enough time to pray in private, to seek the presence of, of Jesus, to know and understand him with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our strength. As John Paul II once wrote, seek Jesus. Let your life be a continual, sincere search for the Savior without ever, ever tiring without ever abandoning the undertaking, even though at a certain moment darkness should fall on your spirit, temptations beset you, and grief and darkness should fall on your spirit, and incomprehension wring your heart, continue to seek with renewed faith and great generosity. Deepen your knowledge of Jesus, to seek him every day means possessing him every day a little bit more. It means little by little being admitted to deeper intimacy with him so that you will be able to understand better the sound of his voice, the meaning of his language, the reason for his coming to earth and for his sacrifice on the cross. So, dear friends, prayer in private must be an essential part of our faith. Now, don't let us be so naive to think that such a prayer is easy. It is a battle in which you may have to face at least three temptations. The first temptation you may have to face is that you want to give it up because you think it is more useful for us to work than to pray. You may say, I am a man of action. I can't pray so well. Well, if you feel such a temptation, then remember what Jesus once said to Martha when she was working very hard and blaming her sister for only sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha, Martha, Jesus said to her, 
you are worrying about many things. Mary, in merely sitting at my feet and listening to my words, she has chosen the best thing. In fact, she has chosen the only thing that is really needed. The second temptation you may have to face is that you want to give it up because you feel you do not seem to make any progress. You feel empty when you pray, bored, distracted, uninspired, doubtful, absolutely not in the mood for any prayer. Very good. If you feel such a temptation, remember what the spiritual writers will tell you that such moments can be a blessing in disguise because now you can show God what you are really worth. Now you can show him that you are willing to believe in him without seeing, to cling and hold on to him without feeling or seeming to get any satisfaction in return sometimes. Now, if you hold on and you don't quit, something deeper will grow in you. It will grow slowly and beyond perception most of the time. Have you ever seen a plant grow? But the end result will be that you will become one with Jesus on a much deeper level than just the feelings alone that you will gain a tremendous capacity to stay united with him no matter what. The third temptation you may have to face is that you want to give it up because you feel so sinful, so completely unworthy to be with God. Now, if you feel like that, try to put one thing straight into your head that this is the first point in our Christian faith. There is no person here in the church, neither you nor any other, no matter how small or poor or sinful, who is not loved by God with an everlasting love. And God says to each of us, as I read in one of my prayer books, I want to meet you in your prayer and don't wait with your love and your prayer until you feel perfect. Because if you wait with your prayer until you feel perfect, you will never meet me at all. So dear friends, let us make this one of our highest priorities to spend a little bit less time perhaps on our newspapers and parties and unnecessary phone calls and computer games and TV programs and whatever else clutters our day and to make a little more time to be alone with God, the All Holy One who is wanting to meet you with his everlasting love. Amen.